During the pandemic, millions of Brits were trapped on the island, which meant that the short-term rental market skyrocketed. But now the pandemic is over and people can travel wherever they like. So holiday home bookings across the UK have started crashing. And what's more, some new laws are being passed that will make owning a holiday let a lot less attractive and in some areas, even impossible. So is this the end of short-term rentals in the UK? Well, in this video, I'm going to explain exactly what is happening to the short-term rental market and why. Plus, I'm going to explain what impact this will have on investors and the property market as a whole. And to be honest, the first reason for this crash is really quite simple. The UK has some truly beautiful places, but when you only have 25 days of annual leave, most people want some good weather. So if you have the choice between a potentially rainy beach in Bournemouth or a 25 degree guarantee in Spain, I know which one I'd be going for. And even if summer bookings stay strong and British holidaymakers keep the faith that the sun will put in an appearance, the key to operating a successful holiday let is filling in the quieter months of the year where you're never going to have a full calendar or be able to charge the highest prices but at very minimum you need to cover your costs so if more people start being tempted by winter and spring breaks abroad that's a problem but we can see from this article in the guardian and i can back it up from conversations that i've had recently that some investors were reporting that january and february bookings were down by as much as 80 percent so it's unlikely that short-term landlords are covering their costs with that however this serious drop in bookings bookings isn't all being caused by the weather. The weather in the UK has always been the same. Awful. And it was actually the pandemic that caused a bigger change in the market. So to help explain this change, I'm going to tell you a typical story of investors that I've spoken to. So let's take Ben as an example. After the first lockdown, Ben had some savings and could see that demand for holiday accommodation was really picking up near where he lived in Scarborough. So he bought a place and put it on Airbnb as quickly as he could to start riding the wave of the UK staycation. Now this would have been absolutely fine if Ben was the only person doing this but that wasn't the case every person and their dog started doing short-term rentals and the market became insanely oversaturated data from air DNA which tracks listings on holiday rental sites Airbnb and VRBO found 342,000 short-term lets available in the UK in the 12 months up to February this year which is up 19% on the previous year and of course that isn't evenly distributed across the country. There are obvious hotspots where the demand is highest and therefore supply sprang up to match it. South Lakeland, for example, saw a 1,231% increase in short-term listings between 2016 and 2020. And Cornwall saw short-term listings grow 661% in the five years to September 2021. Not only does this mean there's a strong chance of oversupply when the market falls back, but it also puts major pressure on the local long-term rental market in some areas. A study has found that in seven areas, including parts of the Lake District, North Yorkshire and Devon, the growth in holiday homes effectively cut the new supply of housing by more than half. And in Copeland, in Cumbria, the growth in holiday lets almost exactly matched the number of new properties being built, meaning that the supply available to local people didn't increase at all pushing rents upwards. Of course, this led to political pressure to do something about the problem. And we predicted on this channel a couple of years ago that legislation to curb the number of holiday lets was surely on the way. Then earlier this year, it finally happened. And this is the real killer for the short-term rental market. Back in 2015, the government announced tax changes that disadvantaged individual investors in long-term buy-to-let property. Previously, they could treat the cost of their mortgage interest as a cost of doing business, therefore reducing the profit that they had to pay tax on. But this was phased out and replaced with a smaller tax credit. This meant that even though in reality nothing had changed, owners were suddenly showing a higher profit and would have a higher tax bill. However, this change did not apply to furnished holiday lets, which almost overnight made them a more attractive investment proposition. But then, back in February this year, the government announced that they would be applying the same rules to holiday lets in the future and also remove another piece of tax law that allows holiday let owners to reduce their taxable profits by writing off the cost of furnishings. As well as changing the tax system to make holiday lets less attractive, they also announced that in the future, planning permission will be required to set up a new short-term let, which will give local authorities the ability to refuse permission and therefore control their numbers. So putting it all together, the collapse in demand, the oversupply and the unwelcome changes to taxes, what does this mean for the short-term rental sector and for property investment more broadly? Well, I think we've definitely seen the peak 
in holiday lands. Even if the government hadn't intervened, the imbalance in supply and demand would have left landlords staring at an empty booking calendar, meaning that some of them would either have sold or changed back into a long-term let. And there is no doubt that the changes to tax treatment will push more people into making that decision too, because it makes a big difference to how much profit you actually make. And while I'd hardly consider myself someone who looks for government intervention in all parts of our lives, I can't really blame them on this one. Because while property is moving between the long-term let sector and the owner-occupier sector doesn't change the overall balance of homes available, the expansion of the short-term sector actually does. And while the impact across the country as a whole is minimal, we've seen that in certain concentrated areas, it can be significant. Also, the difference in tax treatment between holiday lets and long-term buy-to-lets never made sense to me. I'd rather it was equalized by changing the rules back for long-term buy-to-let, but given that's not gonna happen, I'm not surprised to see it removed for holiday lets. So does this mean that short-term accommodation operators are doomed to a future of low demand and non-existent profit? Absolutely not. As with all changes like this, we'll only see the effect on the margins. So poorly run operations in undesirable locations will take the brunt of the impact. Exactly the same thing has played out over the last decade in the student accommodation sector. Professional institutional operators have moved in and created tens of thousands of extra student bedrooms in prime locations with fancy facilities. But the majority of people who provide good quality student accommodation in good areas have been pretty much unaffected. It's the amateur operated house shares miles from the university that haven't seen a change of carpet in 20 years, which ended up struggling to find tenants and eventually being sold off. But whether you're renting student, short-term or long-term accommodation, there are certain tax benefits that you can take advantage of in 2024. So if you want to make your rentals more profitable this year, check out this video next.